All right, here we are. It's Adam22 with a uh, weekly update number two, and I am joined by my uh, trusty cohort, Nate Richter. <laughs> Yo, what up, what up? I love Nate Richter on Instagram. He's sort of the uh, the, the right-hand man over here at the come up doing a lot of the filming and everything, and so I guess the first thing I'm gonna talk about in terms of what's been going on since last week's weekly update is basically the fact that we Went up to San Francisco in the rig, which the rig is this new thing that we have going on uh, with the come up. Basically, Alfredo uh, put up some money and we purchased the uh, the fucking Ryan Gutler rig that he had been using. It's like an RV sort of situation. And I can't speak too specifically about all the different uh, things that are going to be happening in this giant vehicle. But with that thing and the 15 passenger van that we now have combined... Basically, you could say that we're going to be hitting the road a lot. We're probably going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of different kinds of stuff, you know, working on our, getting our trip game up. We've uh, been keeping it local for a little while now, but now that we have the rig, I mean, it could, you know, like, for, for example, Nate edited the entire video that came out today during the drive home from SF, so that's like eight hours of editing that you probably wouldn't be able to get done in uh, the 15 passenger, just, just for example. True? Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. We all, like, at one night, like, ten of us slept in it, so that was awesome, because it saved a shitload of money on hotels, and basically just cover big distances, and it's fun, too, because people always talk to you about it, and fucking freak out about you, but anyway, how was your experience at, uh, the Street Series? You have a good time? Yeah, it was awesome. Finally met Mikey Tyra. He is awesome, and kids will watch out for him, because... Shout out to Mikey. Yeah, he's amazing. He's been killing it. He's staying with us for a little while. I don't know if you guys know Mikey Tyra, but he's got like 800,000 views on his uh, one of his videos on, on YouTube, and he's got like an OSS video that's got a ton of views too and everything. Uh, he's been out there killing it. I don't know. The Street Series in general was an awesome time. They made me stay with uh, Zach Kramis. Well, they didn't make me. I, I didn't think Zach Kramis would want to stay with me, but I guess he chose me to be his roommate. And I was, uh, he's a Rod BMX employee. We've been friends since back in the day, but I haven't really seen him that much in a few years. And, uh, you know, we're both part of the Blaze squad, so that, that seems like a good a good pairing. But That's a good thing about the RV, too, is because you don't really need a hotel room. All we need is, you know. Yeah, if, I, if Monster got me a hotel, but if I didn't have a hotel, I would have been perfectly happy sleeping on the floor of the RV like I did on the way there and like I did on the way back. No, but what I do want to say about Kramis is that the last night we were there, I'm pretty sure he slept like 14 hours. He must have been really fucking tired. Which you did on the way back. I, I also slept for 14 hours, yeah. Shout They're, out to the people throwing out uh, some stuff at the jam. NorCal's crazy. There were dudes throwing out these crazy uh, stuff, you know, stuff that we probably shouldn't talk about that dude does all kinds of weird stuff to you, and I think I was kind of the victim of that on the way home. <laughs> oh, you know, I also just I have to apologize to Nate Richter. I got his bike stolen, basically. One what night. he did, what he did. <laughs> so usually you got to... You got a, a lock, a bike lock, and you lock it to something. But Adam locked my bike to my bike. Yeah. So well, I went out to the van, and there was the, there were my bike and Nate's bike were locked to the van, and uh, to the rack that was on it, and like it was locked in such a way that you couldn't get it off. And I went over and I unlocked my bike, took my bike off, and then attempted to lock Nate's bike back to the thing, but apparently I did it wrong, because in the morning, the lock was still there, and the, the bike was gone, and I, I felt kind of bad about that, but so now I, I gotta finesse the situation over the course of the next day or two to get fucking Nate's bike back into, back into his hands, because you're going back to Albuquerque, right? Yeah, we might have a bike check pretty soon for you if I do get a free bike, so whoever wants to, you know, whoever hooks me up. What, you're gonna do a bike check? Yeah, I'll do one. I, I just asked a certain company, and hopefully I'm going to hit them back today and make sure that they're down. Good word. You know what I also have written down this? Is that I want to compare my stats on my weekly update to LZ's stats on his weekly update. And at first, when I was keeping an eye on this, it didn't it didn't seem like it was going to be that bad. But then I got absolutely trounced. Like, we got, like, 26,000 views on mine, which, which actually really surprised me. It seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. But he gets, like, 65,000 on his. Like, after a couple of weeks, I'll have, like, 80 or 90,000. So I don't want to talk about LZ too much because he's already fucking kicking her ass on YouTube now. And, like, I, I have to accept that he gets more views on his weekly updates. Yep. But... And also the light count, like his light count is insane. Like, I, and the light count doesn't really mean that much for people who don't know about YouTube. Like, you know, your likes are just sort of, you know, if you have, you know, he'll have like 2,500 likes on a, on a video and we'll have like a thousand likes on that video, like for the weekly updates, the yeah. numbers or something like that. It doesn't really affect anything, but you know, for somebody who looks at YouTube like I do, you look at that and you're just like, good, like, why do his fans press the like button so much more? So I'm not asking for any favors or anything, but, uh, you know, 
This is number two. Hit, that, this is the first in our series. I'm sure he didn't get that many views at, in the very beginning. Yeah. But oh. maybe he did. What I need to do is I need to do one of these where I have Stevie sitting next to me. Yeah. Or Xavier. Or anyone, really. Like, just yeah. you know, all my famous friends. Fucking Dave Mira. If I had Dave Mira <laughs> sitting next to me, people would be clicking like crazy. People would love it. Uh... Oh, okay, so here's the depressing part of uh, the thing that I probably maybe should have even got out of the way in the first place. But on BMX Day, tragically, um, the homie Glenn Salyers passed away in a tragic motorcycle accident. Um, from from what I heard, that there were some eyewitnesses, and they basically, he was just riding along, and he hit a rock, and his motorcycle got out of, all out of control and didn't have a helmet on, which was... Uh, an unfortunate decision because or I mean who knows what would have happened otherwise but I mean it's really fucking sad and the the sheer outpouring of support that we saw online was really crazy like if Glenn was still around to see how many people were actually fucked up in the head over the fact that this shit happened to him do you, you ever know him? yeah yeah he is awesome yeah and if you guys don't know who he is make sure to check out his videos he literally is the best he could do everything he used to do Every trick, like on the box jump, yeah. and then he went to street. Super well-rounded. Yeah. And uh, crank arm game is on point. Best crank arm person the, trick combo. The irony to me, or like what makes me feel kind of shitty about it, is that like I rode with him a bunch of times, and I like emailed him a bunch of times just about videos and stuff. We never really got a chance to like connect or really talk that much. Like I, I think he was always kind of shy. Like wasn't like some crazy talker like the way I am, I guess. But I mean, it makes me feel really guilty that I never really got to know him on like a higher level even though we were in communication a lot and stuff like that and then the other thing that's super sad about it is that his uh his girlfriend Brooke Bancourt like she's a she's a female BMX rider and I hung out with her a few times over the years and she's pretty cool and like they really had like a, a relationship that I mean anybody who would see their Instagram or whatever it was or, or if you even watch his videos you could see her filming in the background and obviously that's a pretty rare relationship for two BMX riders to have and I mean it makes the whole thing even more fucking tragic the last the last photo on his Instagram before his accident was just a picture of her just Woman Crush Wednesday and it was just dude when I saw that in the morning I, it just made me feel so fucking horrible like and he's the kind of guy that like when you have the conversation like underrated riders that he's the kind of name that would come up a lot and so now it's really sad that all these people are watching his videos and realizing, like, oh, he actually was one of the most badass dudes, and he never... I mean, he, he got credit. Like, he, sh he certainly had a lot of fucking respect from a lot of people in BMX, but, I mean, I don't know. Now, now you just look at it differently, and you're like, shit, I wish I had... A lot of people are probably like, I wish I had paid more attention to all the crazy-ass shit that Glenn was doing while he was still alive. But, uh, oh, well, the, I mean, the one thing that I guess we can do is that we're having a big-ass jam at the end of the month in LA at the skate house and we're going to be uh, donating uh, a bunch of money I think well the come up we're going to be putting up 500 and then we're going to be matching on top of that so we'll probably end up donating like a thousand bucks to him and then everybody who comes through hopefully they can donate whatever they wanted to and we'll match that and so hopefully we can just raise a bunch of money for his family and whatever that they they're dealing with with the funeral and all that kind of stuff so Rest in peace to Glenn Salyers. It's a real tragic story. I mean, kids, be careful on those motorcycles out there because there's a shitload of, of amazing riders over the years. I don't know what the connection is between BMX and motorcycles, but if you if you ride BMX and you get on a motorcycle, wear a fucking helmet because that shit is dangerous. Um, all right, so unfortunately, now I have to go to a much more lighthearted topic, which is Brandon Began and the fact that he infested our house with bed bugs. All right, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to just kind of. All right, back to funny stuff. Sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna transition right here. Uh, so Brandon Began infected our house with bed bugs. The reason that we found out about this is because Brandon Began. Oh well, no, Brandon Began's out of town. Number one, he's out. He's out Craig. in Connecticut. Craig shows up with his homie Marv Morales. Shout out to Marv, and they stayed with us for like ten days. And while they were staying with us, like, the first night, Craig's like, yo, I got bit. Like, shows me his arm. It looks like bit bugs. I'm like, fuck. Because it's the same exact thing that happened to fucking... Uh, yeah, I've been getting bit all, all the time, too, but... But you just, what, you didn't say anything about it? Or right, you just didn't care? Yeah, just, uh, whatever, I'm used to it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole thing with Brandon and his bed bugs is that when LZ slept in his bed, LZ just comes to me and it just shows me his arm. It's bright red. He's like, yeah, I got bed bugs from Brandon. I'm like, fuck. And then... He fucking, uh, some, some random girl fucking 
your homegirl. She got it from his bed. Fucking <laughs> so many, I, I, a bunch of people. Now that I really think about it, like it's clear that his mattress was already infested. And then the, when the exterminator comes, the exterminator is just like, yo, like nothing else in the house was infested except for his bed. Like he said that Brandon's bed was just a straight up like. And bed. he never got bit. I don't think he. He, he never got bit. There's something wrong with him. Yeah, he has bed bug immunity, which is the scariest thing. That he is one with the bed bugs, and that he is able to just exist with them, and that he's like Jane Goodall with the apes and the fucking. Or he has like a blood know. disease that the bugs are don't like his blood or something. They raise him different in Terryville. <laughs> he always says he's from Bristol, so who knows? Uh, having Craig was out here was dope. Uh, I don't know how much footage he got exactly because I missed a couple of the days and then we were in SF, but uh, he got a bunch of stuff. Marv got a bunch of stuff. Hopefully we can make a web video out of their uh, their time here. And uh, Craig is actually he's going on S and M trip. That's what it is, right? It's not is that Primo trip first and then an S and M trip? I yeah, it's S and M trip. Well, yeah, he's going on a trip. They leave today tonight. Tonight, yeah. Alec is out there too in Oregon, hanging out with shitty. Uh, can't even imagine what's gonna happen to Young Nose Whip hanging out with Max shit out there. Just we left him in San Francisco. Yeah, we left him at the hotel, at the bummy ass motel. And Shitty's phone was dead. Yeah. Can we just talk about how sketchy SF is? It's like God. everywhere you look, it's like somebody's trying to break into your car. Somebody wants to rob you. Like you think downtown LA is sketchy, but I thought it'd be like hippie loving SF. Like it's but... hippie, but it's like drug addict hippies who just want to rob you. And yeah, fucking, true. This shit is just skid row all around. It's lit out in SF, man. There was so many like fucking crazy ass dudes at the jam in general. That was pretty awesome. They're awesome. Okay, I, this is a weird one that I have to do right now that I'm. I'm not equipped for this. I'm not prepared for this. But there's a dude named Ryan Turk. He's a drift car dude. His last name is spelled T-U-E-R-C-K. So this is a very strange spelling. But anyway, Ryan Turk, he's a drift car dude. I'm told by my homies who are into this shit that he is one of the dopest dudes, one of the top dudes. He's got like 200,000 Instagram followers. And I, I don't know about the drift car world, but Xavier's obsessed with him. Fucking uh, Caleb's obsessed with him. And ironically, the weird thing is that he is from New Hampshire, which is where I'm from. This is very unlikely. You don't meet people from New Hampshire every day because this is kind of a weird place to be from. But I guess he fucks with Xavier's music at least a little bit. He's friends with Brian Hunt, who I, I grew up riding with Brian Hunt a little bit too. But so we're trying to get in contact because, you know, uh, and, and I know that this makes me seem like a big, even bigger LZ poser because fucking all of a sudden we're, we, we're attempting to do something in the drift car world. But you have to believe me that this is just... Caleb and Xavier yeah. getting in my ear and being like, yo, let's make a fucking dope ass video happen with those dudes. So hopefully it could happen. Uh, no updates on that just yet. But if you want, like the way that you can help us make this happen is just get in the comments on Ryan's uh, Instagram because, oh, I, I should mention this. He's a BMX dude. That's why this oh. matters. Yeah, oh, this, okay. is, this, this is not completely random. He rides BMX. He follows the come up. He follows, like, if, if you look at who he follows on Instagram, it's like all pro riders and stuff. So... I don't know. We're just trying to do a little collab thing on the YouTube thing, I guess. I don't know. I, I think they have some kind of crazy idea where we're going to take the flat rails to the racetrack or some <laughs> shit like that, which I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but... Either way, it should be pretty Either cool. way, Ryan, get in touch with us. Hollow Squad. We'll make it happen. Uh, I don't know. Caleb Kwanbeck is already saying that he might be the number one uh, BMX rider in the drift scene. I don't know about that. You gotta, you gotta be doing some switch hangers at the, at the, at the drift car track or whatever. It's, it's gonna be so funny if we do a video like that because I don't even know what to call this shit. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to at least learn. I'm not, I'm not trying to get a 240 yet. But I'll be in the whip. I'll, I'll be sitting next to Caleb or whoever when they're sliding around all over the place. I'll, I'll at least entertain it. I'll, I'll pretend that I know what the fuck is going on. All right. And then a lot of people liked that I uh, talked about the music thing last time. So I do want to say that. Uh, if I'm going to give two recommendations, I'm, all right, first one, incredibly obvious, Future, Dirty Sprite 2. Yep. We were listening to it the whole entire SF trip. It's fucking insane. It's probably one of the best rap albums of the year. It's probably one of the best rap albums of all time. Uh, I, I believe that the first lyrics on the first song are I Just Fuck Your Bitch and some Gucci flip-flops. <laughs> so that really, like, that says it all. That's pretty much all you need to know right there. Uh, amazing, amazing album. He's got, you know, he's got Drake on it, and I think that's the only feature. Uh... But either way, it's fire. Uh, Vince Staples. Also going to shout out Vince Staples because he's got a new album out as of maybe three weeks ago called Summertime 06. Uh, if you know anything about BMX, you know that Long Beach is one of the main BMX hubs. Vince Staples takes you deep within the other side of Long Beach. North Long Beach, the grimy-ass side. It's, it's in terms of, like, 
telling the story of what a certain place is like and how crazy it is, I feel like it's one of the, the doper uh, mixtapes or albums I've heard in recent memory, just really keeping you in tune with the streets, man. Vince Staples is an amazing lyricist and it's just an amazing album in general, so I gotta really shout out that and recommend that everybody check that shit out. Um, other news, like last on the last one, we talked about all the videos that we had that came out the week before. I'm going to skip that this time because I had so much other shit I wanted to talk about. Actually, this entire time, you probably don't know this, but me and Nate have been driving to the store. We're almost at the Osa store right now. Shout out Matt Nordstrom. Yeah. Odyssey oh, video. shout out to Matt Nordstrom. That one needs to be mentioned. The absolutely unreal Matt Nordstrom video. Also, the Mutiny uh, Albuquerque video that initially premiered on Navaz's YouTube channel, but then we re-upped it this week. And so that one is worth checking out. Today, we have the video of the SF Street series that came out, so you definitely want to go check that out. Um... But, I mean, we got a bunch of stuff going on. I can't even think of any of it. But also, look at this. This is the new OSS Windbreaker. I got I to gotta mention that. It's got a pot leaf on it. Your kids might not want to buy something like this. You might end up in jail. But we got the whole new line dropping within the next couple of days. So when I do the next weekly update, I'll do a little bit of a review of all the new products that we have available and stuff like that. But uh, all you need to know is that we're doing a big OSS to come up. I'm interviewing uh, Puya tonight who's a very popular rapper, and also uh, Fat Nick, who's sort of his his cohort. So I'm going to be doing an interview with them for No Jumper, and I know a lot of people are excited about that. I believe Eddie Baker's coming through. I'm very excited about that. You're very excited. I'm trying to convince Nate to let me pay him to film it because uh, Scott doesn't want to do it for once, and uh, I don't know. Look at all these sus-ass people with video cameras. <laughs> I thought, I thought that was Walter Peringer. Who is this? Speaking of Odyssey. That could be Walter Peringer. All right, it looks more like a Chad Kage type. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, what do the people need to know? Check us out, facebook.com slash the come up BMX. If you go on there, you get the button right here. You can like us on Facebook. Uh, check us out in, in that faculty. Uh, the come up BMX is the, the YouTube channel. Snapchat, Nate Richter, follow me. Snap, uh, Snapchat, on some shit.com. Instagram, uh, I love Nate Richter. I love Nate Richter. Adam22 spelled out. I believe that we got this first take. I don't even think I'm going to have to cut anything out. Maybe tiny little parts, but anyway. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go park the car. I filmed uh, this with my iPhone recording the sound. We're going to see if that worked out. Let's see if the vi Yep, the voice memo's still going. Oh, it says it's only uh, 17 minutes. All right, not bad. Yo, what up? We're here in SF. Welcome to the Street Series. Hey! I'll fight Gabe. Yeah, Okay, I'm Nate Richter. Hey, what's up, Nate boy? Hey! That shit on the fucking come up and everything. Kill it. So we're down here at Clock Tower, uh, Adam 22, Adam Grant Mason, uh, doesn't know how to lock a bike up on a bike rack, so 